he's so good. Today, I love that we get to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus on the same day that some of our friends are being baptized and saying with their actions, I have decided to follow Jesus. So I want to encourage you again to hoot and holler and get loud and celebrate with them when that happens. And all of these individuals today who have decided to get baptized have done so because God is good and they believe that. So let's sing about that today. Come on.
actually hear you clap at two, but I'm Pe Peter Engler, the adult ministries pastor. We are here to celebrate the good news of the gospel seen in the life of these folks that are getting baptized. So you all can take a seat right now. The reason we celebrate baptisms as a church is this, is we want to celebrate individuals that have committed their life to Jesus. So they've made the decision, and baptism is the public communication. It's the public declaration of life change in Jesus. So they're telling all their friends and family, they're telling all of you as our church family that they believe in Jesus. And we are excited for the individuals in the 9 a.m. that got baptized and the individuals in the 10.30 a.m. So here's how this works. I know that some of you are real quiet, real reserved. We're going to ask you not to do that. We are going to cheer because we believe that Jesus is at work, but we are also going to celebrate these baptisms. Can I get an amen? Oh, come on. 1030, you're better than 9 a.m. Can I get an amen? All right. Our first, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the name of the individual getting baptized and why they want to get baptized. So the first person is Sydney Robinson. And she said this, I want my baptism and rebirth to be my choice and to strengthen my relationship with God. Look over here. In a moment, 
we are going to take our offering, but I just want to thank those of you that have invested your time, your treasure, and your talent in Brown Rock. This is why we give. We give so that there can be life change in Jesus. In a few moments, Pastor Roger Breedlove from In Christ New Hope Ministries in Henrietta is going to be preaching. He was with us in June, and we invited him back to conclude this Rooted series, and he's going to share the importance about sharing the gospel. What about a powerful moment with baptism here. So let's take a moment and get ready for the offering. Whether you're online or in person, I just want to say a word of prayer. God, I thank you so much that in this world of chaos and pain, we have hope. You are our hope. That in a world full of bad news, we have the good news of the gospel. And Lord, I pray for every individual here. I pray for the 11 individuals that got baptized. Lord, I pray that the gospel through Brown Rock would go forward in Rochester and around the world. Lord, I thank you for every person that invested their money and their time in Brown Rock. Lord, I know that even now we are seeing eternal differences in what you want to do. Bless, our, uh, bless Pastor Roger as he uh, brings the word to us. Lord, thank you so much for the celebration this morning. And all God's people said, Amen. felt it? A longing for something more. A connection to something deeper. Something greater. There's far more to the life God offers us. Truth. Community. Real growth. Do you want it? With anyone except yourself, so the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was so satisfying to you that you said that you would move on the inside of us. So we thank you that even now as we speak, you live on the inside of us. So we thank you that you are committed to the present that you have on the inside of us even now. And Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. Then we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit who continues to lead us and guide us into all truth. For your word declares that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Therefore, with great boldness and confidence, I look to the greater one who indwells me. And I know that he'll faint through my mind. I know that he'll speak through our lips the words you have ordained for us to say to your people this morning. All that will be manifest, Father, and all that will be revealed. We promise, sir, to give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. And everybody agree with that prayer said? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, um... Pastor Rob told me that I can just kind of act just like I am at home. So we usually um, hold up our Bible. If you don't have your Bible, you use your phone or, or our gadget. Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. All right. Okay. So I see the same crowd. Got, got to go a little louder. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can do I can what it says I can do. I'm about, I'm about to be taught the inspired word of God. And as I act... Upon the word, I shall receive the manifestation of the word. 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, turn to the person that's sitting next to you and uh, or a little distant from you and let them know you're sitting next to a world overcomer. Amen. You're sitting next to a world overcomer. Yes. Christianity really is called the great confession. So um, I'm probably going to pull a few things. I, I, I heard that you guys were pretty quiet crowd, so I, I'm, I'm just here to wake you up a little bit. So, so turn to the person next to you and say, you're sitting next to a world overcomer. Okay, now, your Bible says that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And the Bible says that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. In other words, faith in the revealed word of God gives you and I the ability to become what the word of God says is a world overcomer. So we start off from the gate as a world overcomer. So I'm going to talk to you today about how or why should I share or tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know you guys are on this particular series. I've been kind of checking you guys out. Uh, it's been amazing. You guys have been doing a, a great job, Pastor Rob and some of the other ministers that are here. So I'm just kind of here to, to uh, put my little two cents in and, and finish up and just continue to share with each and every one of you guys why we really should share the uh, share our faith with, with um, be it relatives, friends, co-workers. So God wants you, God wants to use your voice, he wants to use your life to share his love to the spiritually dead that are around you. Now, there's one thing what happens, even though people can be around us, uh, if, if they don't know Jesus, they're, they're just existing. They don't know that because each and every one of us was in that same boat at one point in time in our life, we were existing, but we really didn't have any life in us because the word of God talks about life really is in the word or life is in, is in Christ. So in 1 Peter, the foundational scripture that I'll be using uh, this morning, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, and it reads as follows, it says, but but in your heart, revere, in your heart, revere, uh, uh, the word revere, of course, means to feel, feel deep respect in your heart, ad admiration for Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone, and that would include the people that are around you, who ask you to give the reason for the hope that you, that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Verse 16 says, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So what we want to uh, basically say here is that, see, you, you, you have to revere what's on the inside of you. And if you are here today and you have already received Jesus as your personal savior and confess him as the Lord of your life, you need to revere, you need to have a deep, a, a deep respect, a, a deep admiration for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what God is going to do is because he puts you in this earth realm, but you came down here in this earth realm with an assignment. And what happens is that a lot of us don't run into our assignment until we really receive the uh, receive Jesus as Savior and confess him as the Lord of our life. Before then, we're, we're just kind of existing. And so we, we think that we are on top of the world and we're doing all these things. We might have things. But do you know that things really can't speak to you? Things really can't talk back to you? And so God really put us in this earth realm really to the, the sphere of influence that you may have to use that sphere of influence to influence someone else to receive what you will already have, which is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in the book of Acts chapter uh, 10, it's, we, we find um, where a gentleman by the name of Cornelius, and who was a, he was not a, Believer, Of course, he was not of the Jewish nation. And so you have a gentleman by the name of Peter, who was one of the, of course, Christ's disciples. But, but, but so 
Peter was in, in a place called Joppa, and then uh, Cornelius was in a totally different place. But this guy by the name of Cornelius, he had this, he had a vision with an angel coming in and, and telling him to send for a gentleman by the name of Peter, who was in Joppa, and and, and he was he was dwelling with another gentleman by the name of uh, of uh, uh, Peter. Uh, 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 and so in the, in, the, in the midst of this whole thing that was going on, God wanted to get this gentleman by the name of Cornelius as far as getting him into God's kingdom. So how is he going to do it? Well, he's going to do it through using Peter. So Peter, you have to understand, Peter, this is 10 years after Christ had left, and Peter still was just releasing the gospel or the good news to the Jewish nation. So there could be some people that are around you that may not look like you, and God has really put on your heart to start sharing your faith with them, but you you haven't moved on it yet. And so don't don't feel, you know, don't don't feel some kind of way, so to speak, because Peter didn't really go outside of his circle for about 10 years until God really uh, convicted him that listen, you know, of course Peter was on the top, the rooftop at the time, he was waiting for them to prepare a meal. And uh, you know, the Bible says he saw this vision and he saw some different animals, wild animals, different different things coming down at him. And of course uh, God said that the angel said to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, I don't put anything common or unclean in my, in my mouth, and so to speak. So, so he said, whatever God said this to, the angel said this to him, whatever God calls clean, don't you call it unclean. Don't you call it common. So uh, one of the things that we have to do is, is, so how do we really share? How do we share our, our faith? Well, we share it by being willing to be used by God. So maybe that's the question that you have to ask yourself this morning. I know I am a believer, but am I willing to be used by God? Now, one of the things that's so important is understanding as a Christian, understanding as a believer, how God moves in this earth realm. You have to understand how God moves in this earth realm. And I submit unto you, one of the ways he moves is this. God doesn't do anything, say anything. anything. God doesn't do anything in this earth realm apart from human instrumentality. In other words, God doesn't move. God doesn't do what he wants to do. He's going to, you're, you're gonna, he's going to need you to, to cooperate with him. There's a scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and it says, um, God said, let us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make man. That's what God said. He said, but we want to make him in our image, and we want to make him after our likeness. And then God said, and let them, that man that I'm getting ready to make, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over all the earth. So God gave mankind, which is us, dominion over the earth. So now, since he gave it to us, in order for God to move within this earth realm, he's going to need your cooperation. And that, and I think the illustration in the book of Acts was an excellent illustration because even, even though Cornelius was over here, and even though the angel came and, and was speaking some things to Cornelius, do you know the angels could not get Cornelius saved? Why? Because God gave that assignment to man. And so that's why he told Cornelius, listen, you send to Joppa for a gentleman by the name of Peter. He'll come. He'll tell you some words that you need to hear that your, you and your household may be saved. So let's pick this up at Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. We share because God is a, he, not only is, is he brings the gospel to us. And of course, the gospel means just good news. So God has some good news for Cornelius, okay? So let's look at this. It says, then Peter, this was after Peter had, had came and, and he had came to where Cornelius was. He started sharing with Cornelius. He started, you know the first thing he said to Cornelius when he, when he got there? He said, now you know I'm not supposed to be here. All right? In other words, some of you guys are probably looking at me like, you know you're supposed to be here. <laughs> this boy, we had, we, me and Rob had built a relationship so he told me it was okay for me to come over. You did say it was okay for me to come over, right? So, so I'm here. So, so some people might say, well, what, what is he doing? And see, here we go. So, so Peter knew 
so that's the first thing what happened when they came into, into the setting. It was like, what, you, you know, so that's what Peter said. You know I was supposed to be here because we don't, we don't fellowship. We, we don't fellowship. So now all of a sudden, but in the midst, after Cornelius tells him his story, and Peter's like being convicted, and me and Pastor Rob had like a whole conversation about this over lunch. We've been talking about, you know, just how God moves. So here you get here. So then it says, then Peter opened his mouth after he saw what was going on. He opened his mouth and said, in truth, he said, I perceive now. In other words, Peter said, I understand that God shows no partiality. And the great thing about this is that God shows no, no partiality. And if he does it, we ought not to. Amen? So it said, God shows no, par no partiality. But then Peter said this, but in every nation. How many nations? Every. Well, thanks for those two or three. And how many nations? Every. Okay, all right. Talk back. The teacher's saying something. You're supposed to talk back. I, I learned that in high school, okay? And, but, but in every nation, whoever fears him, talking about God, and works righteousness is accepted. And do you know, I love this because it says, but in every nation who fears him, talking about God, and works righteousness, that's exactly what Cornelius was doing. And really, if you read this translation, if you read this chapter 10 from the Message Bible, it talks about how Cornelius, even though he was, he was a person that was in authority, everyone that was, a, that, that was in his jurisdiction, he really had them really honoring God. And they didn't even know it. And so that's why this, this part of the verse says, but in every nation, every nation. So he says, in every nation, whoever fears God and then works righteousness. Again, I love this word righteousness. This word righteousness just means that you are in right standing with God. That's what the word righteousness means. It, don't mean, it doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It means that you are in right standing with God. And then righteousness also means the ability, say ability. Ability. All right, that's a little bit. That's the ability to stand in God's presence without any sense of guilt or inferiority. Righteousness also means the ability to stand in God's presence as if sin had never been. And so that's what he says here. But in every nation, he who fears God and works righteousness is accepted by God. Then he says this. He tells about, you, you know, the, the message. He said the word which God sent to the who? Yeah. Notice he sent this message to the children of Israel, and this is what they were doing, preaching peace through, this is why the peace is going to come, through Jesus Christ. Then, uh, of course, he said, he is Lord of all. Next verse. He said, and th that word he said to them, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after, after the baptism with John preached or proclaimed, and this is the key, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and this is what Jesus did, who went about doing good. So I love this verse because it says that Jesus went about doing good. It said Jesus went about doing good, and then he mentions the good that he did, which was the healing. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Then it says this, because God, it says for God was with him. Okay, so Peter understood that after they got through some other, other things. So, so the number one reason um, we are to share our faith is because God wants us to and God expects us to. Amen? Now, we should share our faith because we are workers together with God. We should share our faith this morning because we are workers together with God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, notice what it says. It says, it says, we then as what? Workers. Getting a little weak again. We then as what? Workers. We then as workers together with him. So we are workers together with God, and this is so important. So God is doing something in this earth realm, and we are... And we are, we are privileged to assist him in what he's doing. But he needs us to cooperate with him. So I guarantee you there are some people that God has placed on your heart for you to share your story, use your life, your voice. And that's why he placed you in that position 
where you are. You think it's just there for you to go and provide for your family? No, that's a, that's a, that, that's a, that's a sidebar, so to speak. Your number one reason for being where you are is, especially if you receive Christ as Savior and confess Him as the Lord of your life, is to share your faith. You might say, well, I don't, I don't know how to share. Well, then you need to learn how to share. It's re real simple, just telling your story. Because nobody can tell your story like you tell it. So it's not about you saying, okay, I, I really want to share my faith with this individual that I've been working with for years. Uh, I think I'll just call uh, Pastor Rob and have Pastor Rob come over and meet them. No, you share it. Because it's more effective by you sharing it. Because nobody can tell your story like you can tell it. Amen? Amen. All right, now, so we should share our faith because we are workers together with God. So God is doing something here in this earth realm. He's privileging you and I to assist him in what he is doing. Now, another principle is that we should share our faith because, because, God, because from God's perspective, this is, this is so important, we should share our faith because from God's perspective, there is only one race. I know that's a shocker to some of you. There's only one race, and that race is the human race. I guarantee you, if you, <laughs> I guarantee you, if you, if you, if you cut me, and you cut yourself on, I'll let, you know, I'll bleed like, just like you do. Amen. I, I believe with all my heart that that it, whatever the same thing that you want for your family, that's what I want for mine. Amen? That is, that is so very important. Open your mouth. It's okay. It's, it's free that you can open your mouth. You can say something. This is a very, this crowd may be robbed quieter than the one that was here this morning. All right, now, so we should share our faith because from God's perspective, there's only one race, and it's the human race. In other words, I said this this morning, and it bears repetition. Rob, Pastor Rob, have never seen me, the real me, and I have never seen him, the real him. We've just seen the houses that we live in. He's seen my house. My house happened to be uh, very good looking <laughs> and uh, black. And his house, he's a distinguished, that's what stood out to me, he's a distinguished looking young man, and, and his happened to be white. But, but you know what, but, but when we connected, it was something there that went beyond the exterior. So one of the things that's so important, I said earlier, that you are made in the image and likeness of God. God is, so let me say this, okay, you're made in the image and likeness of God, you know that's in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And so the question comes up, um, what is God like? And so the only person that I know who would know that they know that they know what is God like or how, what is God, would be the person who was with the Father in the beginning. So Jesus Christ was with the Father in the beginning. And so Jesus Christ says in John chapter 4, verse 24, he makes this declaration and he says, when he was dealing with the woman at the well in, in Sychar, he said, God is a spirit. Now, he didn't say God is spirit. He said, the King James said, God is a spirit. In other words, making a distinction because think about it. Angel, that same angel that dealt, that dealt with Cornelius, he's a, he's a spirit. Demons are spirit. And I submit unto you, we are spirits. You don't have a spirit. The real you is a spirit being. You have a soul. Now, in your soul entails your mind, your will, and your emotion. And then what happens is that you live inside of what is called a physical body. So man is uniquely made, but he really can contact three realms at the same time. Man, and from a theological standpoint, it, it's, it makes a statement that, that man is what is called a tripartite being. Meaning just that he just made up a three part. In other words, if I said unicycle, how many wheels is that? If I said bicycle, how many wheels is that? But if I said tricycle, how many wheels is that? In other words, man is a tripartite being. It just, it just means that he's made up a three part. 
but the real you is a spirit being. And that's why if you ever understand that, you'll really, spirits never die. You'll never die. You'll, and that, but it's so important where you'll spend eternity at. And that's why we have to share the good news. And that's why Peter came. That's why uh, First Peter talks about, uh, but, but revere, deeply respect, admire the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. So again, so we said we share because... Um, because from God's perspective, there's only one race. Let's take a look at um, Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through 26. So there's only, from God's perspective, there's only one race, and that's the human race. So watch what he said. So he said, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of what? Heaven. He's Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. So, so, so under the old covenant, you know that God, his presence was intense. It was in, but, but now God's presence today is in these temples. You are the temple of God. God is not next door, not in the neighborhood. I'm telling you, if you have received Jesus as your personal savior and confess him as the Lord of your life, he lives on the inside of you. And he'll share with you what to share with someone else about getting that person to you. So he says here, does not uh, dwell in temples made with hand, nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Notice what it says. It's what I, my point I want to get you here. It says, and he made from one blood, how many blood, how many? Oh. One blood, every what? Amen. So one blood, how many nation? Yeah. One blood, how many nation? Okay, okay, so from one blood, every nation of men to dwell, to live on all the face of the earth and have determined their pre-appointed time and, and the boundaries of their dwelling. So that, that's, that's so important. So it's from one blood. Now, so now the other thing you need to understand is that God, we, we need to share our faith. We need to share how and, and why should we? Well, we need to share because God so loved the world. You know that scripture where in John 3, 16, 17, God, God so loved the world that he gave. Well, you should so love that you should give. God gave his son just for, but he gave his son for the world. So God had the world on his mind. He just didn't think about your for no more. So, so get outside of yourself and understand, we were just talking about it earlier, you know, these different houses, you know, mine happen to be black, yours, yours happen to be white, or, or whatever the case may be, whatever ethnic group you are, but, but these are just the houses that we live in. Say, this is just the house, this is just the house. that I live in. That I live in. That's, some of it. That's it. And if we, and, and you know, so a lot of things are going on, of course, in our city, in our, in our state, in our nation, but, but, and so, and we have a lot of, you can legislate all you want to legislate, you can make laws, all, until, I was talking to Pastor Rob about this, until the heart of a man is changed. Until we change our heart. But, but what has happened, and me and Rob talked about this, and as we had a conversation here earlier, but it's going to take uh, an individual like your pastor, myself, um, that we're not afraid to come together. We're not afraid to swap pulpits. Because I know some of you guys didn't know I was coming. <laughs> but I'm here. And as a result of that, I was, telling, I was telling Pastor Rob, whatever it becomes, we have to make ourselves a committee of one. Because whatever's in the pulpit here, that's what will be in the congregation. Whatever's in the pulpit, because now it becomes his responsibility for, and we talked about this also, not, a, not me and him just having photo ops, right? Because that's how we, when we started talking, I said, listen, man, I mean, we, we have straight shooters with one another, that's my friend, so we're, we're not going to have any photo ops. So if this is what you want to do as a photo op, I'm not doing this. So we've been building a relationship. And uh, he, he's, a, he's an amazing uh, young man. We took, we, we kind of text uh, or, or shoot emails on a regular basis, and uh, we're, we're building something, amen? Okay, so so the Bible says that, so, so the reason that you should share is because God so loved the world that he gave his only son, 
And then, of course, verse 17 said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. So God is never. And that's why it's so important for you to share your faith, because some people think that they are condemned based on some of the some of their past and things that they may have done in the past. So they think that God, you know, God is out to get me. And I tell people all the time, if God is out to get you. Trust me, he can get you. But he's not out to get you. He had the world on his mind, so he wants to save the world. The other thing is this. We, we, we share because we have been bought with a price. We share because we've been bought with a price. Now, I think it's, we are, we're going to practice this again, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9, 19 and 20. Is that it? Okay, right. All right. Oh, I says, or do you not know that whose body? Whose body? Lord. Point to yourself. Say, my body. my body. So do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is where? Amen. So not next door, but in you, whom you have from God, and you are what? Not You're not your own, for, for you were bought at a what? Price. Oh, that's, that's so you've been bought at a price. So he says, glorify, since you've been bought at a price, since you don't belong to yourself. Now if you can't pick and choose who you want to share this gospel with. Why? Because you don't belong to yourself. Now, I didn't say that you was a Christian. I didn't say that you have received Jesus' Savior and confessed him as the Lord of your life. You did. So if you have, guess what? Notice what he said. Or do you not know? So Paul is just reminding the people, listen, do, don't forget that, that, you, that, you are, uh, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God is not kind of moving in on your way to church every Sunday morning. No, he's there all the time. Amen? He's there. So he lives now. The, the spirit of the living God, see what God did, he did something about your spirit, man. He did something about your what? Spirit. He did something about your spirit, man. You are a spirit. Now, it becomes your responsibility now as Pastor Rob teaches you the word of God to renew your mind with, with the word of God. And so that means that I have to step outside of my comfort zone. And if God is leading me to a person that may not look like me, then it becomes my responsibility to share. Let me say this to you. The closer you get to God, you say that you want to walk with God, you say that you want to have an intimate relationship with God and be close to God, the closer you get there, well, let me put it on myself, the closer I get to God, the more intimate my relationship is with God, the less I'll find Roger Breedlove there. Because Roger Breedlove is a very selfish, uh, uh, self-centered individual. All of us are. So that's why we need Christ in our life. Does that make sense? Okay, so we share because Jesus came that we might have life. Oh, my, my final point is that but we share because Jesus came that we might have life. Let's go to John chapter um, 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus made this declaration. He said, I'm going to tell you why the thief came, and then I'm going to tell you why I came. Very simple. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if anybody's stealing, killing anything from you, he just said, that's the thief. Now, then he said, now, okay, now I'm going to tell you why I came. And he said, this is the only, he said this to me years ago. He said, son, this is the only reason I came. Matter of fact, I didn't even come that you might have heaven. I came that you might have my life. And they, so he said, I, I, had, I, he said, I came that I come that you might have my life, that you may have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Now, life, this word life here in the Greek is the word zoe. Z-O-E, zoe. And what it means is the God kind or the God quality of life. In other words, Jesus is saying, now Jesus is the head of the new creation. Jesus, see, in other words, we are the church. We're the what? Church. See, we are the church individually, but then we are the body of Christ collectively. So Jesus said, the only reason, you tell them, the only reason that I came is that they might have my life, 
and that they might have my life more abundantly. So in other words, what God wants to do is that he wants to live his life through you. In other words, it's going to look, it looks like, I mean, I grew up with, let's just say I grew up with Rob. I mean, it looks like the same guy. He walks the same, he all, everything the same. But man, it seems like something different is, is spewing out of him, coming out of him. I mean, his, his, his demeanor, his posture, the way that he's treating people, he's doing different things. I, I was just watching him, you know, uh, during the break, and, and, and he loves people. And you have to, in this business, you have to love people. Amen? So what is, that, what is coming out? That's the Christ in him. The commitment that he has to Christ. Well, that's, that's just spew over. It's to spill over to you to the point where it doesn't matter what the people look like. It should be, in other words, if God is leading me to share. So Jesus said, the only reason that I came is that you might have my life and that you might have my life more abundantly. Allow me. That's what God is saying this morning. How or why should I share my faith? Because he gave his life for me. So what Jesus is saying here this morning to each and every one of us, allow me this morning to live my life through you. Amen? I'm out of time. Thank you for yours. I just want to pray at this time. And the eye closed, please. You may be here this morning or listening, live streaming, online. And you may have never received Jesus as your personal Savior or confessed him as the Lord of your life. God really does love you and he has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. But that plan and that purpose, it starts in the here and now. So if you're here or watching online and you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior or confessed him as the Lord of your life, but you would like to this morning, you're saying, you know what, I, I, I don't have a relationship with God. But in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So if you made that declaration, brother, sister, young person, we believe that you got born again. Get yourself into a good Bible teaching church. Get baptized. And then go, that's when your walk starts. Amen. I'm out of time. Thank you for your Give my brother a hand. And again, I walked in as I was wet. Did you introduce your wife already? Come on, I'm trying to help you out. Apparently, this is the way we rehearsed this. Uh, this, I, this is my wife, Madele Brillo. Can you stand, please? My wife of uh, 39 years. We were married 39 years in July. We have five children. We have eight grands. And so she is the love of my life. Amen. Thank you, you very much. Do you believe this guy has that many kids? <laughs> You, know, you said so many amazing things that um, challenged my heart, but the thing I most loved that you said today was how young I look. <laughs> I'm a young man. <laughs> I love that. No. Uh, thank you, brother. I, I appreciate everything you said, and I hope this is, as you said, you know, just uh, the end of the beginning. Amen. Let, let me pray for you. Can I just pray for your church? Join me as we pray uh, for my brother and his church. God, I thank you for, for Roger, Pastor Roger. I thank you for... Uh, Madel and his wife who is here and, 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 and in a sense their church who is here with us as they uh, uh, in his heart and in his wife's heart as their leaders and we we just pray your blessing on him Lord thank you for the I think 22 years now in this role as the senior pastor of this great church I pray you to continue to renew his strength I pray you continue to fill him with your Holy Spirit his wife his leaders his, his, his church that they might continue to do exactly what he's challenged us to do here this morning, that is to go beyond our four and to begin to look into our uh, communities, into our, our families, our neighborhoods, to bring the message of Jesus, the hope of the world, the salvation of the world, the life of Christ into um, those who don't know him. So I pray you would bless him, bless us, help us, Lord, even just the two of us in our churches, 
to, to model a different way for this world about what it means to love one another as you have loved us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Listen, Colin is here. You're okay. I'm just telling this guy I want to make sure that people know we, uh, we have uh, one more thing to do, which is dismiss you. Turn it off the back. Let's give Pastor Roger another hand. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us today, for worshiping with us today. Uh, yeah, we are like we do not take this for granted <laughs> anymore, and it's such a treat to get to sit in church together. Um, so again, as you exit, I want to encourage you: wear a mask over your nose. Maintain, maintain six feet. You guys know how to do this at this point. Um, as you are also aware, we have seating sections now. So at this point, I'm going to ask the rear row of section one and section five to get up and go. And if you're seated further in front of them, just pay attention to the people that are behind you. As they get up, give them six feet. You can get up and you can leave. And we're just going to listen to Zoom and play this electric piano while we're hanging out. How about that band during baptisms today? Right? Oh my gosh. We're so blessed. So much talent.